All right. Peace and blessings, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Author Spotlight Self-Publishing 30 Days Podcast. I am your host, Rob YB Youngblood, President of Sales for Self-Publishing 30 Days and your LinkedIn locksmith. Today, I have the pleasure of having Dr. Eric Holmes with me. He's a six-time author. He's doing some great things at John Hopkins University. I'm sure he'll talk a little bit about that as well. He's also a member of the Black Speakers Network, where that's how we connected and, and established this, this uh, relationship. And so I'm very excited to have Dr. Holmes with me. Dr. Holmes, how you doing? Good, doctor. I'm good, YB. All is good, man. I'm super excited. I'm always humbled and honored to be able to share with anybody, you know, your story or what you have going on. But just the mere fact, the privilege just to share with anybody on any platform, it's always a pleasure and honor. So I'm just grateful to be here. Yeah, I love it, man. You know, I, I, I you know, I put something out there. I was doing one of my uh, one of my LinkedIn locksmith tips and you you responded on something. Oh, no, matter of fact, I think it was a response to uh, a message that Brian Olds uh, put out there. And then you and I started connecting and I saw that you were an author and it prompted me to, to reach out to you. So I'm so glad that you accepted this invitation. So six time author, like how does how does that work, man? Like, tell me, can you break that down for us? Um, it's amazing. Um, it's, it's, it's such a privilege. Uh, one. Two, I uh, wrote, and then four, I co-authored. And so it's a privilege when anybody uh, invites you into what their vision, their dream is for you to be a part and they have that much that they think of you to invite you in. So with mine, um, writing my own books, but as well as being a part of someone else's vision, yeah. uh, it is a blessing because not only for that, it now makes me a six-time best-selling author. Yeah, that's good. That's a that's a tremendous accomplishment. I know our chief book officer, Darren Palmer. He's he's a ten-time uh, author, and so uh, what this shows me is that hey, if if you brothers could do it, I can definitely do it. And uh, and for those of you who are listening, that that's a that's something you can definitely do. You 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 just finished a, a solo project, right? Uh, uh, am I correct? Yes, called uh, my next season is due season. Mm -hmm. Uh, really uh, phenomenal. And what's so interesting about it, I was just sharing on another broadcast that when I did the first book, The Power of the Sea, God gave me my next season is due season, but it wasn't until five years later uh, that it was released, but he gave it then, but it wasn't up to about a month ago that I got the full revelation of when he gave it. Right, right. I love it. I love it. Now you 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 talking you talking real strong right there. You must have some you must have some uh, some some biblical roots. Is that correct? Absolutely. And my books are biblically based, God inspired, and and definitely with the word. And so what I love about it is when the when God gave me the revelation of the first book along with the second book. Yeah. Um. It wasn't even that I was asking to write a book. I was asking for a project to be a blessing to ministry, to my pastor and first lady. And I came down one Saturday morning uh, to pray at my 5 a.m. prayer. And after praying, I went in the kitchen and I opened the door to the deck. And at that year, I had been in my house 10 years and the tree had changed colors like I'd never seen it. Right. And all I could hear him say was, your season just changed, your season just changed, which he was giving me. My next season is due season, but yet he gave me the power of the seed. He said, put it in the book, the power of the seed. And right then I turned around, grabbed a piece of paper and began to draw yeah. the tree. And so immediately, like 545, I sent it to yeah. one of my buddies who's a graphic designer who owns a graphic company. And he probably said, Lord, what is my big brother, Dr. E, sending me at 545 on a Saturday morning? But you could have missed that moment. Yeah. You could have missed that door of opportunity and that moment that got gave that whole door of opportunity to get what now is a bestseller and now yeah. what was manifested. And so I immediately began to work. You know, I wasn't looking to be a writer, you know, yeah, and yeah. so he knew right at that time. But I, I, I tell people when you procrastinate, mm -hmm. 
and you miss that Kairos moment or you miss that door of opportunity, yeah. what happens is you could miss it and you don't know when it's coming back it's around coming again. Back. Yeah, you don't know when it's coming back. You know, the, one of the things that I heard Dr. Eric Thomas say is that they, they're printing money, right? So money is out there. They print money, but they're not printing opportunity, right? So, right. so once you... Once the opportunity comes, there's no guarantee that it's going to come back. And so we have to be cunning and we have to be wise and we have to be willing to, you know, grab hold of that. Talk a little bit about your background. I mean, like, you know, obviously you, you, you're in the author space. Uh, I know you're doing some phenomenal things in terms of your career. What's your, what's your background? Tell, tell me a little bit more about your background in terms of, uh, you know, what you what, what you currently you're not. You said you wasn't a writer. Right. But, but you're doing some amazing things up there in the Baltimore area. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, originally from Harrisburg, PA, born and raised, went to school, went to college. Actually, I was just back there because we had it's called the 80s reunion. Okay. We're celebrating 35 years, but then it goes from the class of 1980 through 1989. And then I was the uh, one of the keynote speakers for Sunday service. Nice. And so um moving from growing up there in Harrisburg is a you know come from a family of eight five brothers two sisters and moving here um 27 years ago uh and then begin the journey here in Baltimore all in the timing and season of God and then been at um Johns Hopkins for the last 24 years okay. as well as at my church I've been at the greatest church y'all Bethel Temple for the last 27 years and so the journey has been good no matter what the ups the downs the in-betweens but to be able to not only that but to finish my bachelor's my graduate my master's two masters and then the doctorate and so and then the career at Hopkins yes. which uh graduating from the executive business management school for uh um, the Cary Business School, and then next, and no, in November the 18th, yeah. three days after my yeah. birthday, I'll be graduating yeah. from the John Hopkins Leadership Academy. So Come I'm on. super excited about that because it's a program that now has made the top 100, and it's an, an amazing program. So I'm just, you know, the career there has been good, and yeah. you know, just being a bl being blessed to win from every single award in the institution. And it's nothing but to God be the glory, but the privilege that I have been afforded to be the only employee out of all 24,000 that have won every single award. That's awesome, man. That is tremendous. What, what would you say is, you know, when we're talking to authors, we're talking to aspiring authors, what would you say was your biggest challenge with writing your first book? You know, when you think about, you know, you, you've, you've been invited to co-author books, uh, you've, you've written to, what would you say is the, was the biggest challenge in writing the very first book? It, it wasn't so much with the first one uh -huh. because it really flowed. But when I, right before I released it, yeah. the challenge came, my mother transitioned just, oh. yeah, I talked to her on a Sunday, yeah. I was at work, my part-time job at the ER, uh, for Bayview, talking, laughing, Tuesday, I get a call. And so right before I was get the release of the book, mm -hmm. my mom transitioned. But the, the thing about it is I could hear her saying, you know, quitting is not an option. You got to mm -hmm. keep going. Absolutely. And so that right there was enable me to release it, dedicated, of course, all my books to her in her honor. Yes. But that kept me going. And so it wasn't the challenge until it got to the end because the got book it. really was, phenomenal in the flowing, yes. even for the second book. But then there was a challenge where we had a delay because my aunt who does all my editing, my corrections, her husband transitioned mm -hmm. unexpected. Right. So, but I told her it was the timing and season, everything's done and the timing and season, it was delayed on purpose for purpose, but yet right. still on schedule because here it is in the fifth year that my tree changed again, yes. the fifth year of grace, the fifth year. Now it's released in a time where yes. we need to understand yes. that this season that we're in and not only that we have waited, we've labored and now my season is here of harvest. Yes. My due season is here. And so that's when we look at the challenges, sometimes you got to look at them from another perspective and that's you got to right. see it different. That's right. Because it may be a challenge, but then on the other hand, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. That's right. I like that, man. And it's all about the mentality and how you see things and, and being able to, uh, to not only overcome, 
but to help others overcome as well. When you think about the books that you've written, what, what are the main uh, themes that you want people to walk away? When they think about you as an author, what do you want people to think about in terms of the themes that you, that you highlight and you specialize in, in terms of uh, talking about in your works? One, it's inspiration and always to inspire and to encourage and allow people never let your dreams die and never allow others to cause them to die. Yeah. No matter how long you've seen, you've been waiting, wait to the, from the reality to the manifestation and to inspire and encourage people, you know, whatever your faith belief is, you know, to point, I'm pointing people back to the savior, but whatever your faith belief, have faith enough to believe it is possible. It can happen. And so many times I always allow them when I teach um, the power of the seed masterclass, because I have a workbook and a worksheet to the first book. Right. And so what I it, teach them and, you know, I'm glad the libraries and stuff are opening because I love I was doing so many teachings at the library. That's why my book also is in in the libraries, yeah. all of them. So I'm excited yeah. and won the 2020 Reader's Choice Award. And this one is nominated for the 2021 Reader's Choice Award. Mm -hmm. But in all of that, that those things are possible, but you've got to put in the work, do the research and never give up. That's Quitting great. is not an option. And you always got to see things from another perspective. And you got to see the positive, even when it looks like a negative experience. I love it. I love it. That energy that, that listen, the, what you what you all are hearing, what you're seeing, that passion that comes from a deep place, y'all. That comes from a deep place. And so as we land the plane, or, uh, uh, Dr. Holmes, what, where do you see yourself going next? Like, what's what's next for you? Like, what, what? You, you've, you've accomplished some major things in terms of your education. You've accomplished some major things as it pertains to your book, accolades from the schools. What is next for you? What is next? Actually, once I finish um, course with schooling, uh, the thing about it is definitely to be a traveling motivational speaker because okay. I am also a certified life coach. I'm also the director of recruitment for Life Coach School of Arkansas, which I love. And so I'm also one of the instructors. And so to be able to pour and to help um, individuals, as well as um, going to different uh, schools, doing collaborations, which I'll be doing at my alma mater, um, collaboration with the students. But not only that, um, to really, um, actually, I'm launching my, I already have it, uh, my coaching service, um, the Power of Influence coaching service under my Dr. Eric L. Holmes enterprise. And so in the next couple of years to retire and fully launch everything that I have and really focus on my brand, my vision, mm -hmm. while I'm working somebody else's and build, I, I cannot forget about my own. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I see it, retire and doing what my passion really is to do, motivational speaker, traveling, and being able to do a lot of collaboration, you know, and connecting with other people yeah. so that we can come together and inspire, encourage, and lift others up. I love it. I love it. Where where can where can the people find you, Dr. Holmes? Like, you know, you've got this energy, you've got this passion. If they wanted to book you to speak or maybe come in and bring some books in there, how can people find you? Uh, I am on all the social media, uh, Twitter, Dr. E, just type in Dr. E or Eric Holmes, Facebook, Eric Holmes, IG, Instagram, uh, Dr. underscore E underscore Holmes underscore. And of course, on LinkedIn, which people, I don't know why they sleep on LinkedIn, but it is the most professional site to connect with people. And it has a lot of information and a lot of collaboration where most people don't connect um, because they're not on it. But uh, I'm all on the social media. Or if you just look me up on Amazon or <laughs> go to the libraries. My books are there and my bio and information's in there or just, you know, reach out to me. That's awesome. We've had a phenomenal, phenomenal conversation with Dr. Eric uh, Holmes, a uh, six-time best-selling author, uh, just a world changer and inspirator. Uh, listen, definitely follow through, uh, pick up his works and listen, when you reach out to him, let him know that you heard him here at the Author Spotlight Self-Publishing 30 Days Podcast with your host, Rob YB Youngblood, President of Sales. I look forward to in continuing to inspire you, but remember, be encouraged, be blessed, but most of all, continue to share the faith. And the way that you do that is by walking in your gift because your gift will make room for you. We'll see you next week.